Today, we're going to build a control box. This is going to be the biggest ever change to the PMF industry, and it's only the beginning. Alright guys, up until now uh, it was impossible to build your own PMF. The instruction out there were shady at best and most of them didn't even work when I looked at them. The industry as a whole doesn't want you to know how to build that because they're a business and they don't want to share. Now even if you guys end up buying one from me or buying the parts from me or decide to build your own, at least you'll know how it works and there's no secret in this. I want to share all this information and I want this to be free and accessible to everybody. Now I did a little montage about cutting the wood and stuff like that and then how to mount the pieces basically on the front cover. It's nothing too complicated. I mean it's just sizing wood and cutting and planing and cutting holes. I mean between you and me and the fence post if you don't know how to do that you can ask somebody I'm sure somebody will be able to do it for you. So all I'm doing here is just getting ready to cut the holes, cut my holes, and mount my stuff. There's nothing fancy about this. The fan gets mounted on top, so we have the room to put the electronics on the need. That's just a bathroom timer. I love those timers. They're easy, they're simple, and they're proven. And then our trusty old ZKPP2K on top. Now I'm just going to mount the fan, and then I screw it on. and. It's nothing, once again, too complicated. Need a few tools for sure, but uh, other than that, sure is one slick little unit when it's done. One of the things I really like about this unit is the fact that you can adjust the frequencies whichever way you want. You got total freedom. If you want to play with that, that's it's up to you. Um, you only need two screws to hold the fan in place on the bottom. It's usually all they put in there. It's solid. Um, you're going to need the extra screw and then a couple more that you probably have to buy separately to put a, some kind of screen on top. One, to protect your fingers from going in there and two, for uh, stopping a little bit of the dust going in. Nothing fancy. Just put it on and Bob's your uncle. Okay guys, let's talk about this electrical stuff. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. If you're afraid of this, don't touch it. You should get help. Ask somebody to help you out that knows what they're doing. Every country has different rules. Here in Canada, it's different in the States, even though we're very similar. But there's different voltage in Europe. I don't know what Australia and many countries in Africa are very much like us, and some of them are not like us at all. So, please, be careful. This is the block diagram, explains the flow of things. So the 120 comes in to our timer, and then when the timer is active, it energizes the power supply, which turns the 120 into 24 volts. And out of there, it flows in two, two different directions one into the buck converter, so 24 to 12 volts, for a fan, and the fan is 12 volts. It's a computer fan, that's why it's 12 volts, and it's, they're just cheap. If you're trying to buy a 24 volt uh, VDC fan, they're quite expensive. And then the 24 volts goes into the PWM, or is that KPP2K? And then out of there into a resistor, into the connector pin on the control panel, and then the mat has a cord with the pin that goes on in there, and that's it. This is a wire schematic, and we're going to be using that throughout the, the build that we're going to do together. So just a, a little refresher. This right here is our timer switch. Obviously, this part is the 120 that we plug in. This is our power supply, the 120 to 24 volts that we use. And then it goes to the ZKPP2K. 
with the volt plus and minus into it and then it goes out the plus and the minus and as you can see the plus has the resistor to a plug that's going to be on the control panel the other location that the 24 volt goes is into our buck converter and it's going to turn 24 volt into 12 volt and that's for our fan to cool the resistor and then the mat has got a cord attached to it with the plug that goes into the control unit and then we have our coils all in series on this side and on series on this side and then they are connected in parallel with one another once again that's just to balance the whole system nothing too too magical we talked about that in the calculator trusty nanook 909 good box love them and then we're gonna solder our buck converter for the 24 to 12 volts I like to use the colors on the wires. This is our resistor. We gotta tend the, the end to get it ready for when we mount it. This is where we're gonna put the power supply, the 120 to 24 volts. The 120 goes on that side. Pay attention on the left there, there's at the ground and the 24 volt. We're gonna put the resistor right against it like that and the buck converter just that way. I like to put vent hole underneath. Well you have to put vent hole underneath the resistor so the fan blows air and then it goes through the holes through the resistor and that's how you keep it cool it doesn't get super hot but it's nice to have a little cooling anything is mounted no it's down to wire and we are this is the output of the 24 volts one of them goes to the buck converter and then the other one we'll just leave them loose for right now we're just gonna wire them in and then just leave them out for one we're gonna mount them on the ZKPP2K for powering it up. Put that aside for now. No more I'm soldering the wire to the resistor. And that's gonna be coming from the out of the ZKPP2K as per the drawing. No more on 120. Uh, here in Canada it's 120 we put in there. We put that onto my timer. And then out of the timer goes to the power supply to the 120 so into the timer out the timer and you can see the ground down on my screw there i like to put some glue on the zkpp2k after i'm done mounting it so that way it's nice and solid and doesn't move and volt plus from the 24 volt power supply volt minus from the power volt from the power supply there we are. Should have all four screws full by now. Okay, this is called a sticky back. Just put them in there, they stick, and then you put a tie wrap in there to do some wire management. Keep things nice and clean. And now I'm putting from the resistor to the out positive of the ZKPP2K. And then the other side of the resistor will get mounted to the plug we're going to put in right now. So I cut the hole and then um, we're going to put the mail in plug. It's just an aviator connector. I like to put those in so that way um, I can separate the mat and the control box. Now I'm putting the out positive and negative to the aviator connector. We're gonna fill it up with some solder so the wires can melt into it. You always have to tin your stuff before. It's really important. Don't try to do everything at once. It doesn't work. And here we are. You can see the green and the white wire. This is the other end of the aviator connector. This will get connected onto the mat. So there's a cable that's gonna come out of the mat and this is uh, what we use it for. And Tend the wire, tend the connector, solder them together, and put the whole thing back together. They're pretty straightforward. There's no, nothing complicated. Now pay attention to this one. This is really comical. I made a mistake here. I put my boost converter. See the end right there? Yeah, that's supposed to be the out. I got my blue and yellow wire. That's my 24 volts coming in. And look at me. 
I'm turning the screw of my pot and why is it not moving? It's supposed to go down to 12 volts. I'm gonna save you the agony here. This went on for like two minutes. Spinning back and forth and also I found a mistake. So here it is wired properly. And now uh, watch this, watch the pot working the way it should. I'll screw that in and I'll bring the voltage back up to 12 volts. So my black and my red wire will have 12 volts and that's what's gonna power my fan. And ta-da, 12 volts. So now we're gonna connect the black and the red wire to the fan. Um, just find out which one is positive and negative. You can see I'm using my fingers on 12 volts here. You won't zap yourself on that. But once again, if you don't trust yourself, don't do it. Solder the wire together, tape them up, protect the wires. And here we are. The box is complete. Next, we're going to test it with my oscilloscope. So I plug my oscilloscope in there. You can see right now the frequency on top is 988 millihertz, which is almost 1 hertz, and then we're at 1 hertz, so we're 98% accuracy. I'm going to bump that up to 5. There we go. And this is just to show the timer is working. Beautiful fan. And here we go. We got 5 hertz, and we're, so the scope is measuring 4.94. Once again, we're getting a 94% accuracy on this one, so it's pretty good. Or well, maybe higher than for 94. And the fan, when the cycle is complete, turns everything off, so everything is working. Look at this beauty. Isn't that beautiful? Looks professional. Works well. It's got lots of power. And um, it's just a sexy little beast. Okay, next week we're gonna finish this project and we're gonna wear the mat with it. I'm gonna leave you guys with some uh, schematic pictures and the block diagram so you can uh, get to enjoy that. And pretty soon we're gonna make world record with the PMF. We'll be the first one to do certain things. Stay posted, more coming up. Enjoy, stay safe.